afterward, a return to Bergson. A return to Bergson does not only mean a renewed admiration for a great philosopher, but a renewal or an extension of his project today in relation to the transformations of life and society in parallel with the transformations of science. Bergson himself considered that he had made metaphysics a rigorous discipline, one capable of being continued along new paths which constantly appear in the world. It seems to us that the return to Bergson, understood in this way, rests on three main features. Intuition. Bergson saw intuition not as an appeal to the ineffable, a participation in a feeling or a lived identification, but as a true method. This method sets out, firstly, to determine the conditions of problems, that is to say, to expose false problems or wrongly posed questions, and to discover the variables under which a given problem must be stated as such. The means used by intuition are, on the one hand, a cutting up or division of reality in a given domain, according to lines of different natures, and, on the other hand, an intersection of lines which are taken from various domains and which converge. It is this complex linear operation, consisting in a cutting up according to articulations and an intersecting according to convergences, which leads to the proper posing of a problem, in such a way that the solution itself depends on it. Science and Metaphysics Bergson did not merely criticize science as if it went no further than space, the solid, the immobile. Rather, he thought that the absolute has two halves to which science and metaphysics correspond. Thought divides into two paths in a single impetus, one toward matter, its bodies and movements, and the other toward spirit, its qualities and changes. Thus, from antiquity, just as physics related movement to privileged positions and moments, metaphysics constituted transcendent eternal forms from which these positions derive. But modern science begins, on the contrary, when movement is related to any instant whatever. It demands a new metaphysics, which now only takes into account imminent and constantly varying durations. For Bergson, duration becomes the metaphysical correlate of modern science. He, of course, wrote a book, Duration and Simultaneity, in which he considered Einstein's relativity. This book led to so much misunderstanding because it was thought that Bergson was seeking to refute or correct Einstein, while in fact he wanted, by means of the new feature of duration, to give the theory of relativity the metaphysics it lacked. And in this masterpiece, Matter and Memory, Bergson draws, from a scientific conception of the brain to which he himself made important contributions, the requirements of a new metaphysic of memory. For Bergson, Science is never reductionist, but, on the contrary, demands a metaphysics, without which it would remain abstract, deprived of meaning or intuition. To continue Bergson's project today means, for example, to constitute a metaphysical image of thought corresponding to the new lines, openings, traces, leaps, dynamisms, discovered by a molecular biology of the brain, new linkings and relinkings in thought. Multiplicities. From time and free will onward, Bergson defines duration as a multiplicity, a type of multiplicity. This is a strange word, since it makes the multiple no longer an adjective, but a genuine noun. Thus, he exposes the traditional theme of the one and the multiple as a false problem. The origin of the word multiplicity or variety is psychomathematical, deriving from Riemann. It is difficult to believe that Bergson was not aware of the scientific origin of the term and the novelty of its metaphysical use. Bergson moves toward a distinction between two major types of multiplicities, the one discrete or discontinuous, the other continuous, the one spatial and the other temporal, the one actual, the other virtual. This is a fundamental theme of the encounter with Einstein. Once again, Bergson intends to give multiplicities the metaphysics which their scientific treatment demands. This is perhaps one of the least appreciated aspects of his thought, the constitution of a logic of multiplicities. To rediscover Bergson is to follow or carry forward his approach in these three directions. 
It should be noted that these three themes are also to be found in phenomenology. Intuition as method, philosophy as rigorous science, and the new logic as theory of multiplicities. It is true that these notions are understood very differently in the two cases. There is, nevertheless, a possible convergence, as can be seen in psychiatry, where Bergsonism inspired the works of Minkowski, Le Ton Vécu, and in phenomenology, those of Binswanger, Le Cas, Suzanne Urban, in his explorations of space-times in psychoses. Bergsonism makes possible a whole pathology of duration. In an outstanding article on paramnesia, false recognition, Bergson invokes metaphysics to show how a memory is not constituted after present perception, but is strictly contemporaneous with it, since at each instant duration divides into two simultaneous tendencies, one of which goes toward the future, and the other falls back into the past. He also invokes psychology in order to then show how a failure of adaptation can make memory invest the present as such. Scientific hypothesis and metaphysical thesis are constantly combined in Bergson in the reconstitution of complete experience. Gilles Deleuze, Paris, July 1988